Lot number five now. The first William Barrick work. This is very important work. In 1897. And quite a bit of interest in this already here. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 thousand dollars. Here's bid 22. 38 at 38 thousand. 40 thousand in time online. It was all Got the 45 do you? Sold this time. No competition. 42 thousand to paddle for. This was a moment Wurundjeri elder Ron Jones will remember forever. Instead of sorry day here, we celebrate and happy day here today. <laughs> That'd have to be the, the best thing I could ever say that's happened in my life today. Mm -hmm. I finished up with tears in my eyes. It was like, you're happy for someone when you're bringing someone back home. So that's why it felt to me. I was bringing my great, great granduncle's spirit back home to Australia. At Sotheby's New York auction house, two rare artworks created by Ron's ancestor went under the hammer this morning. Last chance online at $300,000. Sold $300,000. Members of the Wurundjeri Corporation gathered to watch at the Abbotsford Convent in Melbourne. I feel pumped, I tell you. Um, it's like we brought our ancestors um, relic back to Australia, where it belongs. Ron Jones is descended from William Barrick, an influential leader and artist in the 19th century. He was revered right through colonial Victoria by both black and white. He was a great um, negotiator for the rights of his people. Art historian Judith Ryan says the resurfacing of a drawing and hardwood parrying shield at Sotheby's came as a shock. We had no knowledge that it even existed, either this or the shield. It's a great learning tool to show that we didn't have a written language. So Uncle William's paintings were depicting our culture and the history, and that's how our people told. It's through drawings. The artworks were put up for auction by the Dupuri family in Switzerland, whose ancestors were neighbours of Barracks. This work had been gifted by Barrack to a member of the Dupuri family. If they no longer want to keep it in their position or something like that, hand it back to the people. The two pieces of art sold for 600,000 Australian dollars. But the Wurundjeri say it's problematic that the Dupuri family has now made a profit from cultural artefacts. If he would have had a conscience, I think he should have turned around and not make money out of 200 years ago of misery that was occurring in, in this country. The Wurundjeri raised almost $2 million to purchase the works, including an 11th hour contribution of half a million dollars from the Victorian government last night. We made the decision, looking at the timing, to step in into a space that would typically be more in the Commonwealth domain, um, understanding the significance of this work. A spokesperson from the Federal Office for the Arts says its repatriation program covers the return of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander ancestral remains, but not cultural artefacts. I'd like to see something happen within the federal government now, uh, when something like this comes up, that they will step in and help them, first people to bring something like their artefacts back home. I think the public should queue up to see it whenever it is revealed for the first time. Hopefully it goes on display in different areas so people can appreciate. It's about educating, bringing people together. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.